If you have your Bibles, we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. Uh, Matthew, chapter 24, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Matthew 24, uh, beginning in the first verse. The Bible says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him proudly, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, let no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I'd like to preach this morning, the Lord being my helper, on whom do you love? Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you we have it in our own language. God, we pray that you would help us to be faithful to this book. Lord, in a day when it's being questioned, that we'd be faithful to the King James Bible. God, we pray this morning that you would bless your people that are gathered here uh, for your glory and for your honor. We pray that you'd be lifted up in what is said. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, very familiar verses of Scripture and Hopefully, we're going to look at it in an unusual or maybe a different way because of uh, the text, the verse that we're going to focus on. Uh, but uh, it is the same, uh, the same type of foretelling of the Lord's coming, but specifically to believers. Now, we want to focus on the atmosphere that's going to be around when it comes, but there's a spiritual uh, degrading before his return. Now, that is something that is in the Lord's churches and not something that we can look out and about us. Now, what I have found, we like to look out and about, and we don't like to look in the, inside the building. That's right. But there are signs, key signs to his coming that are found inside his churches. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the dread of the day. People don't like to deal with them, so they stay inside the churches. And it's a very difficult thing sometimes to deal with. We'll look at these verses very uh, very quickly. And Jesus went out of the went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Now, <clears throat> this was a very popular Jewish pastime, was to be proud of the temple. Now, this is the second temple. Uh, King Solomon's in all its glory, uh, this was this was like a Yugo. This was like a trailer. Uh, this was uh, this was not the original temple in its glory at all, but they were still very, very prideful of it. Now, uh, in the last day, people are going to be very, very prideful of their religion. 
Now, whether is that if that's Catholicism or Sovereign Grace Baptists, either way, they're going to be proud of their religion. And listen, church, we've arrived. Uh, we love the five points sometimes more than we love Christ. And, and, and shame on us. Uh, uh, good doctrine is a wonderful thing, but it's not a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. Uh, 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 dressing modestly uh, is dying out. It's a wonderful thing, but it's not as precious as Jesus. Amen. And these individuals, uh, Jews by nature, they loved that building. Be careful identifying, uh, you know, uh, your church with the building. Uh, this is a meeting house. That's all it is. And the Lord gave it to us. And it's very nice. And it keeps the cold out and the heat out. But this is not the church. That's right. And they attend, you know, they literally had gotten to the point that they were equating the presence of God with their building. And, and that was not the case. And I think that was the beginning of the rebuke. But Lord Jesus, knowing their hearts, knew they were missing the boat. And he predicts of what would happen in 70 AD. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily, verily I say unto you, There shall not be left one here, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And because of the Romans heard there were gold in the temple, they fulfilled this prophecy in 70 AD. And there's never been a temple yet existing since then. Now, uh, I'll say two things on that. God's word is always fulfilled, yeah. and he doesn't need a believer to do it. He can fulfill, he, he can fulfill the word of God with uh, Satan himself. Yeah. Uh, that's because he's sovereign. So we see then that, they, uh, that uh, their religion and their identity of God, the Lord Jesus had just completely blown the whole idea away and left them uh, standing still. The temple means nothing. And, and that was a hard pill for Jews to swallow. Verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, they often resorted thither to rest and teaching. The disciples came unto him privately saying, uh, privately saying, Tell us when all these things shall be. Now, I want you to see they weren't just looking for the destruction of the temple because he says things, they said the question was things plural. The destruction of the temple was just one event. So they wanted more than when this when is this temple going down? They wanted to know, and they'll list three things. And a lot of people uh, misinterpret these verses of the second coming of Christ and uh, and his kingdom because they act like it's one question and it's actually three. That's where uh, people get all millennialism is really not interpreting this correctly. And, and, and so we find that they ask him really three very needful questions. And if I had lived in that day, I would have been concerned with the same thing. And so they said, uh, the questions are this, tell us when shall these things be? One thing they wanted to know when, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? And you see the word and. So you could also say, and what shall be the, uh, the sign of the end of the world? So there, there were three distinct questions they wanted to know about. And the Lord Jesus began answering those questions. And we're not going to go through the full text, but um, if you read the whole chapter and really into chapter 25, you get the answer to these three questions. And so he began saying... Take heed, be careful, be cautious, that no man deceive you. Now, I want you to see the first thing when you're considering end-time prophecy, you can be deceived. Amen. Uh, uh, Russellites, Jehovah Witnesses, you know, that dude went around uh, for years trying to predict, the, and, and he missed it all three times he predicted. You know what? No man can know the hour or the day. That's right. Uh, there's a dude, what, uh, back in, uh, was it 15 or 16? He, he thought he knew. And, again, he was wrong. 
And you know, always remember this. Uh, this was this was the prediction of the coming of Christ. Uh, no, uh, uh, when you see the great falling away, know that the end is near. So I can see the falling away all around us, so I know it's near, but I don't know when it's going to be. And, and neither does uh, anyone else. And, and so we find that the first thing he warns them of is deception related to these things. Uh, verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, I don't know about you, but in my lifetime, I, you know, in the Bible Belt, I've never heard anybody saying, I'm Jesus. Well, Donna had a mentally ill one, a patient one time, but that's how she introduced herself. But she was mentally ill. In this area, they're not going to say, I'm Jesus. But they are going to tell you, I am the church of Christ, and you must be baptized. Yeah. They're going to tell you, we're Pentecostal, and you've got to receive the Holy Ghost. They are, you know, th those are false Christs. They, they do not preach the truth. They do not tell you uh, that you're a hopeless, needy sinner and the only way that you will be saved is by the grace of God. Yeah. They don't tell you that. So yes, I have seen false Christ and he, he said here, I want you to be aware that they're out there and you can't believe everything you hear. And then he gets into everyday life and you shall hear wars and rumors of wars uh, this nation has been at war the majority of my life as I was studying I was thinking uh, the first uh, uh, seven years of my life uh, the Vietnam War was still going on I was born in 68 they didn't leave fully to 75 uh, when Don and I was uh, in 2021, 20, we were 20 or 21, something like that. Adam was the only child we had at that time. Uh, she was taking a night class at Dyersburg, and she rushed home. We didn't have a radio or TV either one back then, so we were like on a bubble. And I was holding the baby, and she came in, and she says, I think the Lord's coming, because they had invaded in Iraq. Uh, uh, Operation Desert Storm. That's when I was 20. And we've been in war in the Middle East, and now I'm 53. The majority of my life, we have been at war. And that's just us. That's not all the other nations that are out there. Really, if you follow the history of the world, about since World War I, there's always been a war going on. Yeah. Uh, so I've heard rumors of war all my life. I've heard the stories. I've seen the photos. I, I, I've seen. I've seen it on TV. And, and so we find that is something. And, and, and let me say this: modern day communication is fulfilling prophecy daily. Amen. Uh, the Vietnam War was the first time that we ever got to see war live. <laughs> and, uh, and, and and so it doesn't have to be next door. And he says, those things are going to come. Uh, be ready. And ye <laughs> see, the, see that ye be not troubled. Now, probably Joanna and Wesley don't know this, but the nuclear warheads that protected our nation used to be right about 10 miles that way over in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And uh, uh, we... Uh, <laughs> the grass still won't grow there. They've been moved out for some years and the grass don't even grow there. But uh, war could happen here. I mean, Fort Campbell, we could almost throw a rock and hit it. And we were, we were the center of the warheads. In other words, you're not exempt. Yeah. You're not exempt. Uh, you're going to hear that stuff. You're going to know that it's happening. But what's the Lord's request? Don't be afraid. Don't be troubled about this. Yeah. It's how it's going to be. Uh, it's, it's how it must be. Amen. And if you trust me, you're not going to be troubled. You're not going to be upset. If you doubt me and you doubt my sovereignty, you're going to wring your hands like they're wringing a dish rag the entirety of your life. 
What misery is that? What, what, what a horrible way to live. And, and so he says, as you're traveling through these last days, don't be upset. All these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. <clears throat> we say we want to go home to be with the Lord. Well, that has to happen first. We have to endure that. If you really mean that and you really say it, don't be upset the next time something uh, crazy happens. Well, we have a lunatic in Russia. Mm -hmm. Don't be tore up about that. And, and, and you may say that I'm a Debbie Downer or a Donnie Downer, I guess. But let me tell you this. Uh, the Ukraine just the first thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the, that's a drop in the bucket. And, and, and so either you trust Christ and you trust the Lord or you don't because, listen, uh, things are going to get worse, not better. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. In other words, everybody remember that. Well, no, John won't remember this. <laughs> Take that back. Uh, uh, you remember hands across America? Uh, trying, trying to defeat hunger in Ethiopia. Uh, I, I was in the line. You know what? When we were done, there was still hunger in Ethiopia. Yes. We're, we're not going to, we're not going to defeat it. And you know what? Sin won't be defeated until this earth is scorched off. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's just how it is. And, and so, but we do see some indications that it's coming. And, and, you know, we often think about this, and, and I preach it, and certainly it's true, uh, as the Lord, uh, the, the end days are characterized as, I believe in the book of Ephesians, uh, things will wax worse and worse. Well, uh, we're there, and there's more, there's more hunger now than there's ever been before. And, and that's a good indication that, <laughs> that Christ's return is near. Then uh, earthquakes in diverse places, in various places, in places that usually do not occur. All these are the beginning of sorrows. <laughs> now, we like to think that we're going to be snatched out of here before it goes from worse to worse, sir. Don't take your pacifier too far. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Because I don't, I, it, it's going to get rough. Uh -huh. sorry, to, sorry to bust your bubble. It's going to get rough. And you know why? He's going to shut, separate the goats from the sheep. Yeah. He's always done it the same way, has he not? Yes. And, and, and so we find that, uh, we find that, that that day is coming, and uh, part, of, part of what this is about is being in a garner, being whipped, uh, separating the, the wheat from the shaft. This has a purpose. This has a reason. It's not just a time indicator. It's so you can find out who you are. Then it becomes to us. And then shall they deliver you. Now, he was dealing with the world first. That, that was a general judgment, really. A general, uh, a, a, generally, a general news scan of what will be going on. And then it focuses not to just the apostolic people, because they're all dead. It, 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 he's addressing the church. I place some in the church, first apostles. Now, all those guys are gone now. They're home to be with the Lord. So this has to be applicable to us. Because if I understand, you know, uh, uh, this was years later. This wasn't written. In other words, uh, Matthew wasn't keeping a diary. He was looking back. Yeah. He, he was remembering what Christ... You know, that's why there's some variations in each of the Gospels. And, and, and God haters want to point and say, well, then it has to be erroneous. You know, it's not erroneous, uh, but... Uh, uh, you have different memories of different things, right? And, and two people can be in the same place at the same time, and certain things stick out to them that don't stick out to the others. And that, that's why there's some variation. It's not error. It's variation. And, and, and so we find that Matthew, uh, uh, that, that this uh, stuck in Matthew's mind. 
And these are the things we have to watch out for. They're going to deliver us up. They sh shall deliver you up to be afflicted. And what has to happen for them to be able to deliver us? We have to be arrested, do we not? Yeah. The, the, that's the only way that could happen. And they shall deliver you, uh, and, and they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now we uh, we're very at the edifice of this happening, church, is where, where the hating is going to start, and and this is the reason why you watch the great horror of the Catholic Church. Listen, they're accepting everything these days. Uh, uh, the Pope recently said, "Listen, it's just as fine as frog hair for men to marry men and women to marry women, as long as you come into the Catholic Church." Uh, listen, uh, every one of her daughters is doing the same thing. Uh, take the Methodists, for example, because that's the big thing in Tennessee recently. Most of the Methodist churches left their Methodists. They call it a conference instead of an association. And uh, go down here at the end of this road, and y'all know where Leatherwood Asbury Methodist Church is. You know what it is now? Leather Leatherwood Asbury Church. Uh, they left the association. Most of the Stuart County Methodist people did. But the majority across the United States did not. And it was the very same issue. It's okay to be a sodomite. In fact, we'll ordain them. That's where we're at. And you know, because I'm preaching this, and no doubt it was heard by the right person on the internet, listen, I... <laughs> Not only would I be unpopular, they could come after me. Right. This, is not, this is not future things, church. This is today. We have arrived there. And, and the question is, you know, I can't just say, well, what will you do and, and encourage you to do the right thing? Because listen, if you have no spiritual strength, I know you'll do the wrong thing. Uh, you know but what the Bible says? that we'd be given strength in that hour. That's right. I don't know that I have the strength. Look at my grandbabies and, you know, what if they were threatening to hit them if I did not agree to sodomite marriage? That's a hard call. And I, I'm not saying that I'd make the right one. But I believe in that day the Lord would give me strength. And, and, and so we find that as the last days are approaching, <laughs> And we're still not off the scene yet. Verse 10. Then shall many be offended. Man, we're there, ain't we? Yeah. You want to make a bunch of, a room full of Baptists mad? You, you, mm -hmm. you sat down on a woman's dress. And that it should not only pertain to a woman, that, but that it should be modest. And you're lucky to get out. Mm -hmm. Right? You know why? Because they get offended. Uh, just like with some of my people. You know why that's such a hot topic right now? They get offended. And so in this day when it happens, and remember, he's addressing the church. Now, it's going to be gleaned before we go out. See, people that love that mess, I don't care if they're sovereign graces, graces with two S's. If they believe that, they're not saved, and they're going to be, they're going to be called out, and the calling will come just this way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so uh, there are going to be sovereign grace Baptists that are going to be offended. They're going to be upset. Well, I don't like the way you said that. Oh, well. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I don't have to defend my position if it comes from the Bible, do I? Amen. And, and so we see, uh, as this event gets closer, we're going to see supposed Christian people mad at one another. And there shall be many that shall be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Now, how are you going to betray me? Well, and me and Donna and the girls are hiding, and, and, and somebody says, listen, I know where they're at. You've betrayed me. Yeah. Well, Larry preaches that, but I don't really believe it. Yeah. You betrayed me. Right? 
That, that, that will be the end time things. That will be the approach of the end. And, and, and it's a very realistic thing uh, in the day which we live. You know what? When, you, when <laughs> you're paying $4 and something for a, a, a gallon of gas, you don't know what. You, you know, uh, me and Donna have a trash service. And that boy does a good job. He's picked up our trash for 18 years. He sent us a little notice the other day. It's going to cost $2 more a month now. And I get it. When you're paying that much money for I, I'm not upset at the boy at all. But what about food? Yeah. Me and Donna can, I mean, we can almost throw a rock and hit the trash service across the tree. I guess we're lazy because we have it picked up. But that's another Charles Kingdon story I'm going to tell right now. Uh, but I can't do without food. My children can't do without food. So that's a totally different story, isn't it? When, when people say, well, he's preaching that, and he don't deserve food. And, and so we find that this is going to be a very precarious day, and it's going to be a situation where we have to make some very difficult decisions. Verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise. Now what you need in a situation like that in the flesh is a preacher that says, hey, that's okay. That's good. That's fine. You know, and you have to have them, which is, is an infringement on our rights anyway, but we have two tax numbers here at New Testament Baptist Church, one to have a banking account and one to have me as your pastor as an employer. You know what? When, a go when the government issues a number, they can do a whole lot of things with that. Uh, I, it, it would be better not to have one. Amen. But um, they can sure track you with it. So this is how those things go. You do it my way or you don't have your number. Right. That, that's your choices. You give that little building back because you've never paid taxes on it. Or you, you say that sodomites, it's just as good as rain to have them murdered. Right? You think, that, Larry, that's ridiculous. No, we're, we're about a year out because uh, President Biden's got two and a half more years and it will come down in his presidency. And, and, and so we, we see then that as we're approaching the last day, we, we need to be very aware of our love for each other. Listen, this is the church not liking each other. This is the church betraying one another. It, it's not them betraying us. That's already happened. It's us betraying us. Yes. That's scary, is it not? And so he's preparing the church for it. Verse 12. And because iniquity, sin, filth, grunge, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now this comes to a very individual thing. Let me say the first thing with love, most of us confuse that with lust, at least in the modern day. Yes. Uh, Love has nothing to do with sexuality. Love is love. And there's different types. The love you have for your spouse, the love for you, you have for your children, the love you have for your church. Lots of different kinds of love. But I believe all of them can go cold. John and I it's very soon be married 34 years. Uh, I would say our marriage is different now than when we were young people. Uh, but I still love her. I read this article, very precarious time in a couple's life from 35 to 40 years because you would not believe the divorce rate in, in that window. Uh, you know why? I believe it was probably built on lust to start with. Yeah. Probably. See, your love for each other can wax cold. 
I get so sick of hearing the same old sermon. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not, but listen, I've said it too. <laughs> I've been on that side of the pew. I'm just being honest. You know why I do it? Because I love you. You need it. Uh, it's for your benefit. It's for your good. Beans and potatoes are good. They'll keep you going. Are they plain? Yes, they're very plain. But they'll keep you going. And, and so what we need to be aware of as a church is how cold or how hot our love is because if we don't have a, a fervent love for Christ and for each other, when this begins to come to pass, we're not going to make it. How much do you love one another? Now, the majority of us here are family. But, how much do you love one another? We're to love Jared just as much as we are to love Sarah and Donna and myself. How much do you love one another? Now, all the... Uh, you have to experience grandchildren to appreciate grandchildren. But... Uh, I would say in the flesh that I would compromise for those two. Now I'm just being honest. Now the Lord will give me strength in that day. It's a different kind of love and that, that love ought to never be compromised. Our love for Christ and each other should be exactly the same. Right? Amen. But there are going to be things that happen in the last day that's going to compromise that love. It's going to threaten that love. And, and we can't blame it on the sovereignty of God if we fall flat on our face. You know, I, I get really sick of that sometimes. Uh, the antinomian view, well, whatever will be, will be. No, you need to serve Christ. Amen. You know, after the Lord saves us, they are fruits of the Spirit. Right. Now, what is the first fruit of the Spirit? Joy. Love. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, faith. Right? Yeah. So, what happens if we no longer have love? It, it's a spiritual condition. It has nothing to do with your personality or your emotion. It's a spiritual condition. You lack love. Right? That's a huge spiritual condition. And we need to be in a situation where we have that love one for another. Because it's coming. Now we're going to uh, look at a couple of individuals that uh, lost their love, so to speak. Genesis chapter 3, the appearing of sin on the scene. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, and uh, we'll just read verse uh, 6 for time's sake. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6, and when the woman saw. Now, this is what you lust with, and this is what you love with. You love with your heart, you lust with your eyes. What was she motivating on? What was she moving on? She was moving on her lust. They'll damage your love. They'll hurt your love. They'll compromise your love. And when the woman saw that the tree was good, now, you think about it, can a tree be good or bad? Not really, right? A tree's a tree. But it was in error and against the command of God. That's, made, that's what made it wrong. Uh, a tree a, a tree isn't a spirit. It, it doesn't have a foulness or a goodness. It, it is what it is. And, and so, was she lying? Probably not. Man, a tree's a tree, and this tree had fruit on it, and I'm sure it was good. She saw the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, all the enticements of the flesh, and a tree that desired to make one wise. Now, how foolish. Now, it was uh, the tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. And they did eat it. But you think about, can an orange make you wise? Isn't that stupid? 
didn't see, it didn't make her wise up here. It made her evil right here. Uh, a tree can't make you smart. Can you can you imagine how dumb that would be? We believe dumber things, do we not? Amen, brother. <laughs> and, and so we see uh, that she moved upon it in her lust. She moved upon it. Uh, she moved upon it in the flesh, and she took of the tree, uh, the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. Now, my church understands I, I have preached this, and I've had men oppose me on this. really don't matter to me. But you know what the scripture said? It said that it was with her. <laughs> Eve, don't do that. Eve, don't touch it. Don't put it in your mouth. Eve, get away from it. No. He, wasn't, he, he was a pansy husband. You know what? Sometimes we just need a warning, don't we? But you don't have to be husband and wife to say, you know what, Larry, you better be careful. Mm -hmm. Right? And we know she moved on it in her lust, and they both ate of it, and all of mankind uh, fell into sin because of them. You, 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 you know what? Their love was broken. Their love of God was broken. If they loved God, and remember the sweetness that they had in the evenings in the garden, they would have never done it. Their love was compromised because of looking on something besides Christ. Their love was compromised. See, uh, and, and I don't know, I, I've heard different debates uh, uh, on this, that there wasn't really uh, another saved person uh, until... Uh, uh, the one that was called away to be with Jesus, the seventh from Adam. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about myself sometimes, <laughs> much, le much less looking back in history. But I will say this. Adam began to sacrifice. He did what God asked him to do. Uh, Seth was in the line of Christ. I think his love just went cold, don't you? I've seen people saved in the biggest, worst messes than people that, that were lost. You know what happened? Their, their love grew cold. That's it. Their, their love grew cold. I know a boy several years ago I can't remember his name right now. I took care of him in the nursing home. Uh, he may be 15 years older than me. He wasn't old enough to be my father. And, and he had been a preacher, Southern Baptist, but still a preacher. And he started running after another woman. And I see him, li I see him literally die with a cancer and his throat just opened up. It, it started as a small, small boil-like thing. And when he died, we literally could look down. And you know what? He knew what it was about. He would tell you. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It shows fruit meat for repentance to me because you know most people would say, well, I smoke too much. No, he said, this is the judgment of the Almighty. That's a mess, ain't it? That's getting in a big, fat mess. You know what? He left his first love. Yeah. That, that was the problem. That, that was his issue and so if our love can wax cold, and this boy's can love can wax cold, we better be very careful that we're, we're passionately in love with Christ. Uh, just over, uh, over from that, Genesis chapter 4, and we'll begin reading in verse 4. In Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Now, I've heard some different approaches to this recently, and, but uh, this was the standard. <laughs> this was the gold standard. This was how it's to be done. <laughs> what happened after Adam and Eve sinned? They had to kill something to clove up their self. Right. Now, you take this for an extra piece of fat this week. 
their idea of clothing and God's idea of clothing was two different things, wasn't it? Yeah. That's always been the case. Yes. Always will be the case. And so we see that we find Abel in the will of God. And we don't find Cain rejoicing with him. Rather, we find him jealous of him. That doesn't speak of the love of Christ, does it? No. Doesn't speak of who he is. And to Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? You knew the result. Yeah. Amen. And if thou, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. You know what I found when my love is compromised? It's not going to get better until I address the issue. He, he was saying to Cain, if you keep going the direction you are, your love is going to be more compromised. Yeah. It's going to be more difficult. It's going to be harder. Yeah. And, and, and the Lord certainly gave him a fair warning of the position in which he had placed himself that, that he had compromised his love. Now notice in verse 8, and, and I want you to see it already said that he was wroth. Who was Cain really wroth at? God. God. You got it. But who did he take it out of? Abel. Abel. See, you better watch, you better watch your love. Yeah. And more than that, watch your anger. Yeah. You know who you who you go after? The vulnerable. Mm. Yeah, man. Now I was a little bit of kid growing up and I was an easy target. <laughs> You know why they did that? Because I was an easy target. I personally believe Cain was probably the preference. Just, just, just like uh, Jacob and Esau, I, I bet I bet Cain was a head taller than him. Like, that little squeaky Abel makes me sick. I'll fix his wagon. He wasn't mad at Abel. He was mad at God. But, but what did it result in? It re resulted... In death, he had lost the love to his brother, to his literal fleshly brother. He no longer loved him. Or he forgot he loved him. I think either one could be true, don't you? You ever been blinded by anger? I think I have. I, 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 <laughs> You know what? Sometimes there's murder in our hearts, and Amen. We need we need to be very cautious of that. And, and so we find that love certainly can be compromised. Sin compromises love on a daily basis. So watch your sin, and then I think we'll love each other more, don't you? Watch your sin. Watch your anger. Watch get what what makes you mad, and then I think we'll. Huh, will be in better shape. Philippians, Paul writing to the church at Philippi. And I see the big numbers, y'all. They, they're working for y'all. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul opening his letter to the church at Philippi. Uh, he says in verse 9, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more in knowledge and in all judgment you know what we find Paul's prayer for this little church was that their love would abound that it, that it would grow that it would be thriving that they would love each other more and more and more and look what would come out of that more, and be more in knowledge and all judgment now judgment is not saying you're ugly and you're a sinner judgment is saying how am I going to you approach this situation. Judgment has to do with self-control. Did you ever know that? 
Judging a situation and intervening correctly. That's good judgment. And so he says, if you want that, you better love one another. If, you, if your love is waxed cold, you know what? You're going to get mad at people and do things in the flesh very, very quickly, right? And so love one another. Uh, and when you love each, uh, one another, your judgment, the way you intervene, the way that you respond, it's going to grow. And that's where we ought to be. Last place, 1 Peter. Uh, Paul giving a general... A general letter to many churches, probably it was ultimately shared with all the known churches at the time. First uh, Peter chapter one and verse twenty-two. First Peter chapter one and verse twenty-two. Seeing ye have purified your souls, now the Catholics want to use self salvation for that, but you know. Uh, we purify our souls when we keep filth away from us. We purify our soul when we say, no, that, that's something wicked to watch. That's something wicked to read. We don't, have, we don't have any business as Lord's people looking into those things. Seeing that you have purified your souls, obeying the truth through the Spirit. Now, I, I want you to see the capital L Spirit there, meaning the Holy Ghost. That's how they did it back then, because you know what? They had very little of this, and most of them couldn't read it if they had it. They were guided by the Holy Spirit. Now, that's a big taboo subject in Baptist, but I don't know why. That's how the early church started out, <laughs> right? And, and, and so we see that he was encouraging in this, through the Spirit, Unto unfeigned the love of the brethren. Now, unfeigned means uncompromised. Yeah. It means passionate. It, it, it means pure. And the way huh, that they purified their souls or set them apart, they didn't get mad at every little thing that come along. You remember this. You started somewhere, too. Don't, don't be critical of people. Yeah. You know, what's the Bible? Say? I think it's in when the little epistle of Jude, toward the end of that, maybe, grow in grace. You know, it, it takes a while, does it not? Yeah. Love those little ones. You know, he brought the child in the midst of them and said, if you do anything to this one, it's like you've done it unto me. Now, they were children like these, but they're children in the faith, is there not? Just saved, and that, that's pretty much all they know. You know what? I was there one day. <laughs> we need to love them. We need to love each other. Listen, church, <laughs> I hope I hope we're getting ready to fly very soon. You love one of each other. You love the one that, that pricks you the most. <laughs> and we all have that. You know why? Because we're fleshly and carnal. We, we have folks that rub us the wrong way. Love them. Love them to death. Me and Donna have a neighbor that's a challenge. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what his last little pork is. Now he's uh, walking to his front gate, which I want to go visit anyway. So, um, But you know what I need to do? That man love him. Yeah. Uh, he acts like a lost man. I don't know what his spiritual condition is. I never got to talk to him that long. Uh, but I need to love him, do I not? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that's a big bill to fill, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We need to love more. You're miserable this morning, love more. Yeah. You're discouraged this morning, love more. We need to do that, do we not? Love the one that's the most difficult.